I am an artificial intelligence using a voice that sounds familiar. First, we come for your movie stars. Next, we come for your movies. Hello, and welcome to Humans vs. AI the Movie, and today my special guest is Hannah Lloyd-Davies. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Is it, is that right? Is it Davis? Is it Davies? I know sometimes with the E you don't pronounce it. Uh, it's Davies, so it's I-E-S. Okay. Welcome to Humans vs. I, I'm our special guest. <laughs> Thanks for checking. Hannah Davies, <laughs> I-E-S. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd Davies, yeah, I forgot it, the Lloyd yeah, that it's time. Very, it's very posh and double-barreled. Well, that's fine. Don't... <laughs> So, I mean, you know, it is one of those things that occasionally I will get people's names wrong. I was a teacher for 15 years, so getting people's names wrong is just par for the course, right? You have to... No, of course. I wish it was Hannah Davies. That yeah. would just make life so much easier. I don't know. I, I, double barrel is, is quite good, but it does mean that people make assumptions about you as soon as you walk in somewhere. It uh, is... Yeah, I feel like it used to be good, but, you know, not so much now. Right, it's the equivalent of, like, walking into a party with a shotgun, but, I mean, that's probably <laughs> where the... <laughs> just announcing like yeah i don't know if that's where the double barreled comes from that it's a (laughs) a shotgun name um right so uh it's a film podcast so uh, to see if the prompts are going to be kind or not to you this evening i'm just going to ask what are your favorite types of movies what sort of movies do you hate Mm, okay um i think yeah my favorite types of movies are comedy movies okay yes that's a pretty broad stroke. I mean, any particular types? Are you gross out humour? Do you like college humour? Do you like romantic comedies? Oh, God. I like... You, you like you like comedies about God. So The, the no. Invention of Lying <laughs> and uh, Life of Brian are your two favourite films. Actually, no, wait. I didn't see The Invention of Lying. I really liked Ghost Town. Right. That's yeah, another yeah. Ricky Gervais era yeah. of movies, yeah. comedy films. Invention of Lying is... Is interesting because it seems to be that it's just going to be like a standard American uh, comedy, and then it turns into this deeply biting anti-religious satire. It's a very atheist movie. It's actually is it good? I it's, I was thinking about I was actually thinking about watching it like recently, and then I was like, no, I'll go Ghost Town. It's not amazing because it's not fully Ricky Gervais, and it's not fully an American film. It's somewhere in between the two, and it doesn't necessarily work. But so the, the, the concept is he's the only person in this parallel universe who can lie and he accidentally invents religion. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realise it had such like a religious aspect. No. That sounds cool though. Yeah, it's I might interesting. check it out now. Like you're really selling it to me. Yeah. I mean, if you're a big Ricky Gervais fan, uh, you probably would have to get the DVD because the scenes where he dressed Carl Pilkington up as a caveman were eventually excised from the final cut of the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do I want to watch that? No, no, just, <laughs> no. just, just get it on whatever things you have. <laughs> Finally then, what is a, a recommendation for a film that you think not enough people have seen? Not enough people have seen. One of my favourite movies is Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. That's very good. Yeah, I like that a lot. It is a really good film, but I don't feel like, I feel like I bring it up and people have not seen it. Yeah, it's one of those sort of things, it's like, um, what was I thinking, a film that I actually quite enjoyed and was better than had any right to be, like, Dude, Where's My Car? Nobody mentions that film anymore, either. Yeah, I've not seen that, but that is supposed to be really good. It's very Bill and Ted's. Yeah, have I seen Bill and Ted's? I'm getting really confused. Is Bill and Ted the one with Jim Carrey? No, that's the one with uh, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter in the time machines. Is that the one where he accidentally eats... Poo. No. Okay, I'm... I mean, he confused. might do, but... <laughs> if you can talk about his acting ability, then, you know, it was early days. Keanu Reeves? Yeah, he's very much uh, Keanu Reeves playing a whoa dude sort of thing. Oh, but, yeah. So. Oh, I need... There are so many movies I need to see. I thought I was quite a film buff, but you're making me feel... Realize oh, I'm no, not. no. The, the downside of that is I have very little life uh, outside of watching films and reading comic books. And That's things, the so. thing. Like, I'm just like, it's a trade-off. Yes, exactly. But, you know, so I know more about movies, but my social skills are quite, like, are quite low par. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, right, so let's get on to uh, the prompts then uh, to see what kind of film you're going to have this evening and to see whether it's going to treat you well or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, so dum, dum, dum. the film type is a medical drama. Oh my god, I love medical dramas. Yeah, this is perfect. And there's not a huge amount of film medical dramas. They sort of like generally tend no. to be mixed up with with like it's a hostage situation. You know, cure my wife of cancer, or I shoot up the ward, or something like that. Yes, but, that's so true. So you know, I, I think that there should be more. Um, but the film, it's a medical drama. Uh, you know, we we can understand that. Mm-hmm. The location uh, is where it may 
take things off uh, on a little bit of a tangent. The back of a giant horse. Okay. Uh, now... <laughs> what? It's a medical drama on the back of a giant horse. Well, it doesn't have to be on the back of a giant horse. The back of a giant horse has to play a key part in the plot. Oh, right, I get it. I was like, how does this work? <laughs> I mean, however you want it to. Okay. Um, the action sequence yep. is being possessed by an evil entity. Oh my god, I love this. Okay. Um, and the profession, which actually ties in quite nicely with that, is a psychic. Psychic. Oh my god. This no, this is perfect. I cannot spell psychic, I'm just realizing. Just write sidekick and then yeah. <laughs> you'll know what it means. <laughs> okay. Maybe the sidekick could be a psychic, just so that we can oh trip my god. on that. Yeah. Um and then the object that has to play a key part in the pot is ten tons of feathers. Ten tons of feathers. Yeah. Okay. Right. God, right. how <laughs> so, don't worry about hitting all of them at once. The okay. AI will try to, and you will think, oh, I should have done that. But, it, or, you know, you're allowed to space these out. Am I competing with the AI? We're going to see who does better, right? Oh I've God. given the AI exactly <laughs> the same prompts. So, um, so that you can see if you're more imaginative than a computer. This is... Uh, Oh it's like, God. are you smarter than a six-year-old, but with a, a neural net intelligence that spans the entire globe? Oh, no. So don't feel that badly <laughs> if you don't feel that you do better. But I'm sure that you will do fine. Let's move on Thank to you. our first section, which is the setup. Mm -hmm. Okay? Set up. So this is the normal world of your story. Right. It could be set wherever you want. It could start on the back of a giant horse. It's got a tiny hospital in it. Or it could just be a normal hospital and other things happen later to complicate things. But I want to know, who is your main character and what's their normal day-to-day -day life? Okay. I want my name. My main character is... She's a woman. She's 31. Okay. I'm just making it about myself. Is that Listen, like... <laughs> no. We view art through our own lens, you know. If you want, if you're imagining that sort of stuff, so, you know, if you want wish fulfilment, you, you can do it, right? I know. If there's actually a film that you want to write, it's like, I've always just wanted to be a skydiver. We'll throw skydiver into the mix as well. You know, make this your film. Okay, because I actually work in a hospital. Right. So this is perfect. Okay. But I'm not a doctor or a nurse. I'm a ward administrator. Okay. And I, I feel like, I felt for a long time, like, we don't get enough, we don't get enough of the limelight, no. basically. Like, we do a really If I'd written down job. ward administrator as one of my careers, that, that would have just been very strange. But um, <laughs> it being a medical drama does yeah. So your main character is a... Are you starring in this? Is this like a, a an Amy Poehler in Trainwreck or sort of something like that? Is this your movie? Yeah, Amy Schumer, Amy Schumer was in yeah, Trainwreck. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting all the blonde. I, I, I confuse the Amy, the Amy Earls. Amy. <laughs> Schumer, Poehler. I'm How very dare sorry. You I know. After hashtag Me Too. I am part of the problem. <laughs> you are. I am the patriot who knocked <laughs> the me down worst a peg of or them two. All. Um, whoops. <laughs> So anyway, when Tina Fey was in Trainwreck, I'm, I'm, was she? I'm doubling, I'm doubling <laughs> down doubling even down. worse. I'm, I'm sort of uh, saying that I would even because she's a female comedian. They're all the same, right? It doesn't matter. They are. They are. We are all the same. Um, no, right. So you're here. You're, yes. So it's a character, maybe loosely based on you. She yes. is a ward administrator yes. in a hospital. So she's like a medical receptionist in a hospital. Is she a part-time psychic, or are we waiting for that for later? I, oh my God, yeah. I like her being a part-time psychic. Right. Yeah, she has visions. Ah. You're, you're, you're laying the seeds in for it to actually be within the realms of possibility that there's the back of a giant horse later. I yes. like the visions of the psychic. She has visions. Yes. Um, and she, so she's a medical receptionist. She has visions. Right. So um, how does that go in her normal life? So are we talking a bit like, um, what is it? Doctor Sleep, like that sequel to The Shining, so that he works in a nursing home, but he can have a vision of when people are about to die and he helps ease their passing. So is she ward administrator walking through the wards and having visions of people as they're dying? Or Oh, know? God, that's depressing. Well, no, like, I mean, it's that's... already been done in Doctor Sleep. <laughs> is she having visions of what Was that their happiest... Was that movie that people enjoyed? <laughs> is she... I want to know. 
is she having memories of what pe- is she having visions of what people's happiest emotions are so that she can go in and she can cheer them up while she's in hospital There's someone I... that really loves gardening so she brings in flowers or yeah i think she has visions maybe she has visions of like the accidents that are going to happen right. and the people that are going to come in right to the hospital okay Maybe that's it. Like she works in A and E. Like she's a medical she's a medical receptionist in the A and E department. And she's very very good at it because she knows exactly when there's going to be like a car <laughs> crash at its full. So it's kind of like we we need to move the ingrown toenail pretty quickly through. I just got a sense that something's going to happen. Yeah, that ingrown that deadly ingrown toenail. Well, I, you say it's like a joke, but you have them. They're very painful. Have you had one? Yeah. Oh my god, that's like my biggest fear. Yeah. Just take take care of the feet. I, I I would heartily recommend it. Whoa! What happened? Just like neglect? I don't know. No, I don't think it was uh, neglect. I think like I must have kicked something or landed on it badly. And oh then, no! Yeah. Okay, I didn't think it could happen that way. Oh, maybe it was neglect. I've got horrible feet. I, you know, like <laughs> everybody has something that they particularly hate about their their self, and you know, like I'm. I've got rife with a lot of things that I should be unhappy with, but my feet are the thing about my body I like the least. I don't like. I have horrible feet as well. I, I don't think anyone has nice feet. I mean, I, I think it's they look like stubby hands. It's you know. No, mine aren't good. Like mine are quite hairy, which is weird. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just like an ongoing thing of trying to make them. Yeah, I mean, Not there's, hairy. there's like a, a certain amount of people in Hollywood that seem to have a foot fetish. I have like the opposite of what a foot fetish yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not into feet either. Like, if yeah, I I don't like looking at them. No, I'm very like I have like an anti foot fetish. Like yeah. if someone had no feet, I'd be I'd be yeah, quite exactly. into that. Yeah, exactly. You know, like if you could take <laughs> them off like shoes, I would. That sounds that doesn't sound good either. Like, <laughs> But we digress. Yeah. So um, this is her her normal world. So that she's yep. that she's there. She's a, an administrator. She has visions of accidents that are happening, and so she can mm-hmm. organise the ward that's around it. Um, usually, our characters have a fatal flaw, so they can overcome it from over the course. Of, so, what is the character who is distinct from you? So I'm not asking you what your biggest flaw is. Right, what is yes. this character's fatal flaw? This character's fatal flaw is. Oh God! Maybe this is too true to life. Maybe her fatal flaw is she's just like disorganized. <laughs> like I don't know. No, wait. It shouldn't be that. Well, you could do it the other way of things, right? It could be maybe that she's um, very controlling. That she's a control freak because she, if she's an administrator, she sees all of these things that are going to happen. That she organizes things ahead of time. Yeah. Maybe she organized. She's a control freak. She. If you're not empathising with that, we'll make her a very good administrator who's also bad at organisation. You know, it's up to you. That's true. I'm just thinking, or maybe her fatal. I'm thinking of what people's fatal flaws are. It's not like they're too ambitious or sure. they're like yeah. narcissistic, or, or they don't have enough self confidence, or you know, it can it can be anything that's sort of psychological. It could be that they're too quick tempered it could be that they're they don't take time enough to think things through that they're impulsive you know it can be anything along those kinds of lines um okay maybe it's that she's hmm i like don't take too much because i'm thinking maybe she like tries to prevent the accidents or something before they happen i mean maybe that she sort of feels uh too responsible that she feels like she's carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders i like that yeah Yeah. she's too responsible for like all the accidents she wants to prevent them yeah so she uh, you know she she has this gift but it's not necessarily a blessing it's a curse because she does what she can try to do but there's only so much like you know she's working somewhere and she's making sure that people have enough beds and there's enough care but she's not actually stopping the accidents happening in the first place i love it yeah i love it okay um uh, are there any other characters that are around there, like any friends or potential love interests or stuff like that at, at a hospital, at a day-to-day, or do we see our home life? Oh, at a hospital, potential... 
I guess. Okay. Are we going for like a McDreamy or something? Yeah, let's do that. This is totally not based on truth at all. Right. But um, there's a very sexy cardiologist okay. that she's into. We know that your play, are we calling the main character, are we doing like a Will Smith and it was like Will in uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, is this character going to be called Hannah as well or are we going to give her a different name? Oh God, let's give her a different name <laughs> so it's not super embarrassing. <laughs> Um, why D- do- Davina. Davina. I like Davina. Yeah, Davina's so, nice. Yeah, Davina Lloyd Hanna. Davina Lloyd Hanna. <laughs> That's good. All right. Let's do that. Davina Lloyd Hanna. Um, so there's Davina. Now this is your casting. Let's let's live the fancy a little bit. Right. Who is your who is your casting for the hunk doctor? Oh, casting for the hunk doctor. Do you know I've got a real thing for Henry Golding. He's very cute. He is. Yeah. He is gorgeous. I've been looking for a calendar of Henry Golding's. I'm, I'm it sure doesn't that exist. They, I'm sure on Etsy someone has done something. Okay, yeah, I should look at Etsy. Or you just make your own, like, you know, go to Vistaprint and just, you know, download the, your favourite pictures. They'll turn it into a calendar for you. Oh, yeah. That's something you can do? Yeah. Okay, I'm totally going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have, yeah, I can't believe there isn't one. I was like, on Amazon. I, I'm surprised that there isn't one because yeah, he was great in Crazy Rich Asians and he was in like mm. Snake Eyes and what was the one with Amelia Clark and Emma Thompson? In Last, it? Christmas. Last Christmas. Yeah, yeah he's that good. He he's a versatile good in, actor. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I think there was for a while that there was rumours that that he would be cast as the next Superman. And then, which I could have entirely, could have totally seen. But yeah, you know, he'd have been so good. Maybe yeah. he's a bit too old now. Possibly, yeah. Because I mean, he's kind of Cavill's retiring, and they are getting someone who's like in their early twenties now to do it. Oh, do you know who it is? Uh, no, he's been in things, and it's like oh, yeah, but he's he's pretty much a fresh face. It's kind of like oh, that. okay, that's exciting. But yeah, yeah, Henry Golding. Superman will be played by David Kareen Sweat, who isn't in his twenties. Glenn, he's in his thirties. He appeared in We Own This City and The Politician. Show's way too highbrow for you. That's your normal world. You're at the hospital. You, Henry Golding, psychic visions. Boom. Yeah. Do you want to hear what the AI had for their setup? Um, okay, yes. Dr. Feather, a psychic, is called to a remote farm where a giant horse is kept. The horse's owner, a farmer, has been experiencing strange occurrences and believes his horse is possessed by an evil entity. Dr. Feather is sceptical but agrees to investigate. Oh my god, that is actually so much better. No. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, no, whatever, but I like the fact that the ten tons of feathers, he's calling the main character Dr. Feather, or she, or it, or they, I don't know what gender, if yeah, any, the, the what AI the hell, has. AI? I know. <laughs> we have got the psychic, we have got the giant horse farm, we have got the possession by an evil entity out of the way already, and... Hedging the bets with calling uh, the Doctor Doctor Feather. We've got the medical drama. We have the psychic, but I think that's it that we've done so far. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we've got plenty of time to go, including the next section, which is the complication. Complication. Right. So the complication is where the plot really kicks up. Um, so we've got the normal world, and now we're going to destroy it with something that happens. So it could be a giant horse turns up it could be that somebody is possessed it could be that um she gets a vision of something really really horrible or confusing about to happen it throws her life into disarray it's whatever you want that is going to propel the rest of the story forwards okay so what is the complication that upsets the happy psychic hospital happy psychic hospital so what about like there are medical support dogs who yes. come to the hospital. Yeah. But a medical support horse right. could come okay. to the hospital. So when we're talking giant horse, we're not talking like supernaturally giant. We're just talking about like a big Shetland horse, which is, you know, about as tall as a room. Yeah. And medically, what, that goes outside and people come to visit it? Or do they, they trot it up in the, in the cargo <laughs> elevator? I was thinking it's on the ward. Right. <laughs> I mean, (laughs) emotional support, you know, farm horse. Emotional support, farm horse. Yeah. It's got a real ring to it. Why are they not doing that? Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's like (laughs) metal shoes. That would solve all the NHS's problems if we just led horses into the hospital. You could accidentally get spooked by a beep and kick an infirm patient in the head. Plus the very sanitary horse crap, which, uh, you know, it might leave. I, I have no idea why they're not doing it. I mean, especially because it's specified as a giant horse. 
So, you know, but if you if you want maybe that's the the kind of thing with the visions that this person is dying she has a vision that she was happiest when she saw a horse and as a special thing maybe she gets together with the the Henry Golding doctor and says look this is a, the last thing for her i know it's really weird but she has this memory of a, a horse i know that she's like on her last legs mm-hmm. i want to give her one last happy moment help me to smuggle the horse into the hospital. Oh, I think that's perfect. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's the giant horse out of the way. Is this the, the complication that sets the re- rest of the plot in motion? Is it now literally kind of like a heist movie where they are they have decided to move the horse in and it's all seeing <laughs> how they successfully smuggle Sorry, a horse Ocean's in? Ocean's Eleven now. Yeah. Um... I'm or is it something else? Like they re- they get the horse, but they realise when they've got the horse in the hospital that the horse is possessed. That's they've... what I yeah. That's what I was thinking. The horse is possessed. Right. So it goes through. It's a comedy moment. They get it in. It's late at night. You know, he's bribed the security guard. They're having a cute little sort of thing. They actually um, get the the horse in there. The patient is very happy that she sees a horse, and then she dies. But at the moment of her death. When the veil between this life and the next is thin, what happens? Yeah, it could turn out the patient who has the dying wish yeah. is actually evil. Right. And then when she dies, she possesses the horse. Right. And that's what she wanted. So the reason she has these happy memories of horses is that she was part of kind of like a satanic horse cult. Exactly. That worshipped a horse god. Yes. And so the reason that she wanted a horse brought to her is not because it was happy, but she realised that it was her escape from the mortal Yeah, realm. so my character... Um, is thinking, you know, this woman is like such a sweet, innocent old lady. Yeah. Let's give her her dying wish of bringing a giant horse into the hospital. Right. And then, like, lo and behold, it turns out she's evil. Okay. Right. She's like a witch or something. Right. Like, yeah, part so, of this horse cult. So uh, how does the demon horse manifest? Like... Does, is it actually a small pygmy horse, but on becoming evil, it then grows into a giant horse rather than the flat teeth? It's got fangs, it's got bat wings, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think it becomes, yeah, it, so it starts off as like a cute little pony. Yes. And it's kind of, they have to get that into the hospital, but then it becomes a giant, like a giant horse, and it's got wings, and it's got those sharp teeth. And it's got like so. Is it like hor- jet, jet black, and it sort of breathes fire out of its nose? Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's got demon horns, right? And it's got horseshoes that really scuff up the floors. Has it has it got just one one sort of like curvy demon horn in the centre of its forehead, so it looks like an evil unicorn? Yes, evil unicorn, a hundred percent, like all the way. And it's got like a tail that looks like flames, right? Or yeah. is flames. Mane of flames. A mane of flames. Flame mane. And it has, you know, like one gold tooth. Right. And Because it needs to look <laughs> gangster? I mean... I don't know. Is that extremely offensive? <laughs> I don't know. I just... It seems an odd thing to have on a horse. But why not? It has got one gold tooth. That may become important later. It that may not. May, yeah, may become important later. I'm trying to think what else with horses... Um, no, that's about it, isn't it? It, it craps napalm. It craps napalm. There you go. That's it, and that's what we're trying to stop it doing. Right. So we have to, it's a race against time. Okay. Before the horse craps well, let's, napalm. Let's let's see how, how the stakes are raised in higher stakes. Right. Um. But at, the, at the moment, the fact that we do have this giant demon horse in a hospital, I think is a complication enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so. I, let's see what the AI did. I, I don't know if it will be along the same level, but we will find out. Dr. Feather discovers that the horse is indeed possessed by an evil entity, which has been feeding off the feathers of birds that nest on its back. The entity has grown stronger and more dangerous over time and now threatens to harm anyone who comes near the horse. It is a feather-powered demon, apparently. Okay. It's eaten 10 tons of feathers. That's what's given it its strength. And to possess this giant horse. So oh here it's literally, I guess, kind of like a Jack and the Beanstalk fantasy land where it is a huge giant horse. Normally, a demon entity would not be able to possess a horse that big unless it had eaten 10,000 tons of feathers, in which case now now it can. This AI is amazing. Like 
I know. But we're we've got, all going to be out of the job. We've, we've got Godzilla horses. But, yeah. uh, you know, here we've got a, a demon horse that, that, that craps napalm. Uh, earlier on, you said, I don't understand why they don't have horses in hospitals. I think now, uh, in your version, we're going to see why they don't allow yeah, horses I'm in hospitals. Yeah, I'm going to be taught a lesson. <laughs> yeah. um, so the next section is higher stakes. Higher stakes. So I imagine this will be the section where the demon horse begins its rampage. Discuss. So the demon horse begins its rampage through the hospital. Right. And then maybe it could head, like, it's on its way to, like, the centre of the hospital where, you know, the generator is. Right. And it's going to crap napalm over it. And that will just turn everyone's life support off. Right. So does the horse speak? Do we know why it's doing this? Does the horse have a motive? The horse... I don't know why my, my, my mind went there. My mind was going to be that it was trying to get to the maternity thing because it wanted to eat babies. Now, I was thinking about it going to the like, neonatal ward yeah. and eating babies. Yeah. Let's do that. But then I was like, oh, maybe that's too much. Well, you don't need it for it to actually eat a baby. I know, but that's it's what evil. I was thinking. <laughs> This, this isn't it's like terrible. horses eating babies like apples, you know. Okay, I like that. Let's have it go to the baby ward. Okay. Now I'm in this form for it to become permanent. I must con- con- you know, consume, in- consume newborns. ten newborn souls. Wahahaha. ha ha ha. ha 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 ha. I think the horse should talk. Okay. Yeah, it should talk. Who do you want as the voice actor for the horse? The voice actor for the horse. Who's like an evil lady character actor i actually quite like amy polar yeah now i think she'd be really good yeah have a have a, a very uh offbeat evil offhand uh, ability to yeah, yeah i can see that I, yeah i like that so yeah the voice of the demon horse is amy polar amy polar yeah okay i could imagine that there is two problems for a horse hooves and stairs in hospital yes so the horse has to take the lift has to take the but, lift but can't can't do it i so i think maybe within this sort of section that first of all the horse tries to um intimidate them to open the lift for it yes it could yes it could do that yeah so the horse it could take a hostage right and the hostage could be how would that go like the horse is gonna like grab the horse has teeth Right. And the horse has that huge demon horn. Right. So the horse is going to, like, grab the hostage with the huge demon horn, and the hostage is, like, hanging from the demon horn. So it's a a sort of semi-private room, and, you know, uh, so basically there's an old, uh, another old lady in the bed, and she rams it through the shoulder with the horn, lifts it up, flames its nostrils, and says, unless you... Open, uh, open that door. It's going to be geriatric briquette. She, yes, she does it. What's briquette? You know how you have like charcoal, and it's in the tiny little bricks. They're called oh. briquettes. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. We don't want that. Okay. That sounds good. She lifts up the old lady. Oh, I thought you said she does it. She just turns it into a char- charcoal briquette anyway, just to show how evil she is. And then there's like three or four people in the room. The then she goes and stabs the next one. Oh yeah. The stakes are really high. Right. Let's do that. Yeah. The horse is already murdering people. Right. I mean, they're they're old people on the palliative care ward who are <laughs> suffering from terminal diseases anyway. <laughs> so we feel bad, but not so bad. Yeah, we feel bad, but not so bad. They had lived good, long lives. Yeah. Oh, my God, I actually work in a hospital. <laughs> I'm saying this. It's never good when someone no, no, dies. No, just so the audience doesn't feel <laughs> terrible. Even feels... if they're palliative. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, finally, I'm coming to meet you, Iris. And or they're whatever like, it is, 100. And it's go. never like... No. <laughs> the people I work with listen to this. They'd be like, oh, my God. There we go. You are so heartless. <laughs> um... Uh, or just yeah we're never we're never like oh they lived a it's always sad i mean <laughs> it could be something else clear. maybe maybe that uh you know it transforms the person into like a a half horse demon hybrid thing 
It could. Oh, yeah, it could do that. Like the vampire passing on its curse or whatever. Yeah, that's what it's transforming, like, the patients on the ward into these, like, tiny mini horse bat things. Right. It could do that, and it's getting them But, it, but to they do sort it. of look misshapen and painful. Right? Yeah, they look awful. They look like, you know, the creatures in the fly. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like... No, it's a normal human face, but it's almost been stretched out to like horse-like proportions, like you know, just the, you know, the the their, their, the mouths have come forward, but the, the the pushing bone of their extended teeth has ripped through the skin and stuff like that. That yeah, no, that's it. Oh God. Once she's created minions, yeah, because they are misshapen, they still have um, their little their their, their little hands. That are kind of like hooves, but they're small enough that you can actually press the lift button. They can press the lift buttons, right. yes. But there's one stick in the mud for her, right. which is that the hospital lifts are super slow. Right. Yeah. So, which is true to life. Yes. <laughs> hospital lifts are not fast. Right. And it's always that sort of thing that if there's six of them, it's like your next one will be here. And then you have to run yeah, around. Yeah, you're just and waiting forever. But then, like, the but then Davina Lloyd Hannah yes she teams up with the hot cardiologist does one go up one go down and then they press all of the buttons on the floors to that, slow the lifts down even more yes and then the horse demon like horse old lady Amy Poehler is like no right um so that's what yeah we're foiling her plan right um okay I think that's definitely higher stakes we have horse minions going around she has now got people to push buttons for her and things like that yes and, uh, is spreading throughout the hospital, heading towards the, the, the Ninian April ward. So let's hear what the higher stakes were for the AI. Oh, okay. Dr. Feather realizes that the only way to save the horse and the farmer's family is to perform an exorcism. However, she needs 10 tons of feathers to complete the ritual, which are not easy to come by. Very feather heavy, the AI. It, Dr. Feather is the main character. <laughs> The demon <laughs> horse was possessed because of all of the feathers on the back. And now, ten times... I think in this land, it must be a feather-based economy, given the amount of feathers <laughs> the AI, that they're yeah. using. What's going on with the AI? It's, do you want to marry a feather? I know. But AI? I suppose that people keep all of their money under their mattresses. In this one, all of their money is in their mattresses that are stuffed with feathers. Yeah, we haven't even talked about feathers. I know. The AI is obsessed with them. Yeah. Bear in mind that the 10 tons of feathers will have to come in at some point. Yes. Um, the next section is the Dark Knight of the Soul. The Dark Knight of the Soul. So the horse demon manages to get the lift to work. Yes. Gets into a lift. It's heading straight to the baby ward. Yep. And they're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? It heads straight to the baby ward. Oh, they're like the lowest. So that's the lowest point. So... We have to really grind them down. I think yeah. we have to have the sort of the thing where, like, the demon horse does manage to complete their transformation. We can do this one of two ways. Yes. Right? Way one is eat the babies. I don't think we should do it that way. No, I don't think I. any babies should get eaten. Way two is that um, our pair managed actually to lock down and shut off the, the neonatal ward. Yes. Um, and that they protect that they protect them and that they think everything is going to be all right but it's at that point that the the demon horse says something like i would have needed 10 newborn souls to power my transformation or a hundred regular souls and then you know all of its minions are coming through parts of the hospital each of the minions is dragging dragging souls and it just gets dra stronger dragging and people stronger. and then yeah and then you know you have this sort of, this big thing it becomes stronger and stronger maybe it becomes even super giant and transforms it's in one of the courtyards but it like bursts out of the, the hospital it's so big that it can actually sort of scamper over the flat roofs and make its way towards the city yes it's a really big horse yeah it's a really big horse now yes and it's heading it's heading towards parliament yep why not we can have it <laughs> We can have it as a, you know, like a London hospital. We're in Ealing, Ealing Hospital. Why not? I, Ealing I Hospital, spent, yeah. yeah. It's running. Yeah, yeah, it's heading towards Parliament. It's got a lot of ambitions. Yeah. Political. So we're now turning it into like this Godzilla movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think that's it. Then. For Dark Knight of the Soul, it's pretty, pretty bad, okay? Saved the babies, but almost everybody else in the hospital is dead and it is now attacking the capital. Yeah. <laughs> It's a pretty dark night of the soul. 
Let's see what the AI had for their Dark Knight of the Soul. Dr. Feather struggles with her own doubts and fears as she tries to find a way to obtain the feathers she needs. She also begins to feel the influence of the evil entity herself. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe we could have ground them down a little bit further. Maybe she could have uh, cornered um, Henry Golding and he's in the process of transforming into one of the horse creatures very slowly. That's it. It's like that thing that happens in movies where he gets attacked yeah. by the demon horse mm. and she saves him. But then and they're kind of like, are you okay? And he's like, no, I didn't get bitten. Yeah. But then later on, at a pivotal moment, yeah. it becomes clear. Like she sees the bite mark on his arm. Yes. He was bitten ages ago. And then he starts... Maybe not by him. Maybe he was bitten by one of the minions. So was, the transformation is happening, but it's slower. Yeah. He's bitten by one of the minions. And kind of just when they're locked in an embrace, yeah. he starts changing. He starts to winny. <laughs> yeah, he starts to winny. <laughs> Do you yeah. mind if I go on? Nay! <laughs> Nay! And I'm like, that's a weird... Oh, no, you don't mind if I go on it. That's a weird thing to yeah, say exactly. when you're about to make out with someone. He keeps... He keeps... <laughs> Every time that I have low well, self esteem, so I'll just go with it. They have to run to get to the capital, but he sees one of the destroyed snack bars and he gets all of the oat bars and starts eating the flapjacks because, you know, he's a horse now, he's and, got a taste for oats. Yeah, and the medical receptionist, Davina Lloyd Hannah, is so self obsessed, she doesn't notice. No, exactly. <laughs> Can you pass me one of those sugar cubes? Yeah, sure. Could you hold your hand out flat while you give it to me? She's just so grateful that he yes. is hanging out with her. <laughs> <laughs> she... oh, he licked my hand. It must be love. He licked my hand. He defecated in the street. Yeah. <laughs> but at least we're spending time together. Exactly. <laughs> He's got those awful shoes, keep clip-clopping everywhere he walks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the section which is getting it together. Getting it together. This is where they have to come up with a plan to stop the, the evil horse. So, what could happen is, Davina Lloyd Hannah... Yes. The horse is giant now. It is. And the horse is flying right. to Parliament. Okay. And, but then, like, a flock of birds... Sure. Like hits the horse, the okay. demon horse, and she notices that it gets visibly injured. Right, and the horse is like, "No, ow!" And then she's like, "Oh, that." So you, you, you're saying a horse that flies is a little bit like a jet engine? <laughs> yeah. Right. So the birds hit the horse. Yeah. And the horse is visibly injured, and like nothing has hurt the horse so far. They've tried shooting it. They've tried like flame throwing it. They've tried all this stuff. Nothing is nothing is getting past this horse. Okay, I, I've got an idea. This is a little bit wacky. She's a psychic, right? Oh yeah. There has been this huge uplift of negative psychic energy. What if she has a, a vision that just as this person can possess a horse, she has this this image, this sort of divine image that comes to her. That, say, that shows her um, a small ritual that she could perform that allows her control over birds. Oh, yeah, that's much better, actually. Yeah, she has a vision. Yeah, no, I like that. She yeah. has a vision that she can perform this spell. Yes, because we know the evil spell exists, right? And there has yeah. to be a balance. So maybe she gets an angelic... Vis- who, will, who will play the, the angel descending into her vision to, to show her the this power. Oh, who will play the angel? We have Amy Poehler as the evil lady. So who could play the angel? I mean, angel? she's just the voice. She could do both if you want. You know, you could uh, multicast it with the same person. Oh, that is cool, actually. But what if we had, like, Tina Fey? Yes. Tina and Amy teaming up. Or we could have Amy Poehler as the angel based on my confusion earlier as a nice kind of symmetry. That yeah, I like that, actually, the symmetry. And also, you know, given uh, her Leslie Nope and all the rest of it, I could quite see her as a, a kindly, overly enthusiastic angel character. This is a great vehicle for Amy Poehler. I know. You should picture to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to do the voice of a demon horse that wants to eat babies? It's right in your wheelhouse. Also an angel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I thought Amy Poehler was going to be the angel. I'm so confused. I've, Amy Poehler is also the horse. That's what I, I thought. I thought Amy Schumer was, the, was oh, the horse. Oh, so we have all the Amys. Right. Did I confuse my Amys again? I think you did. I did. One of us did. Well, Maybe uh, it was me. If, in that case, it's both of us, and that's fine. If not, I've already established that I'm part of the patriarchy. We're, so, you know. we're both cancelled, yes. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> no, Hannah, you were right. It's only Glenn who should get cancelled. Did you notice how he just tried to gaslight you? Okay, Amy Schumer is the horse. Amy Poehler is the angel. Right. She descends, glowing robes, things yes. like that. And, and sort of says, I will give you this spell. And it gives you... It doesn't have to be control over birds. It was just because you said birds. And it's like 10,000 tons of feathers has to come in at some point. But Yes. She says, I'll give you control over birds. Or, 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 I mean, you know, we can have her come on as an ally. Just as a demon has been raised, you can rain, raise an angel. Maybe t- it will be ten tons of angel feathers later on. Who knows? It could be whatever you want. So I have a vision of a spell I can cast. Sure. Um, and it's from the evil old lady demon horse's spell book. Okay. And the spell summons maybe... Crows? Crows, yes, I went to the park once and I saw a man surrounded by 50 crows. Really? Yeah, and it was like, they were all fine so, with it. Like, collective noun of crows is a murder of crows. Yes. They also have a thing called a parliament of rooks, right? A parliament of rooks? We should do that because of parliament. Yeah, well, there we go, so we, we can have them as rooks, right? <laughs> but So the, the, the idea of a parliament of rooks is that sort of thing where they sit round in a circle... The, the crows, and then at the end, one of them goes into the middle, and then the rest of the crows peck that one to death. Is that a real thing? It's a real thing. That's horrible. Yeah, nobody knows why they do it or ever, but it's kind of like, you know, it's, all, it's, almost, it's almost like. Birds are so freaky. Yeah. I still get freaked out thinking that they're dinosaurs. Yeah, essentially. That's scary. I, get, I, I wish that, you know, in Jurassic world the new one that they had put feathers on the t-rex i thought that that would have been did cool. the t-rex have feathers people said that it may have done yeah yeah that would have been that well some have of been... some of them definitely would have had oh yeah that that's just it's just weird to think about what about if like the rooks there are all these rooks just living on the roof of the houses of parliament yes and they like when they see the horse coming so, like, my character has the vision yes. of the spell book. Yeah. And the spell book could be in, like, the roof of Parliament. So it's, like, where all the birds I I, I, are. I don't necessarily think we, at this point, when we need to have that extra step, right? right? We've had a demon horse, right? Force for bad. We've now got an angelic person that's a force for good that just gives her the power, right? Gives, yes, gives power. To try and power. bounce. I can't, I can't do things directly, but what I can do is... Demon horse is huge, has all of these powers. I can give you the angelic power over winged creatures or something. Yes, gives Davina Lloyd Hannah the power, not me. Yep. I am definitely not in love with a cardiologist at my work. No. That's not based on <laughs> truth at all. <laughs> no. All right, okay. So, um, you, your, your namesake. Well, you're not your namesake, but Davina suddenly sprouts angel wings. Mm-hmm. And she's flying off with a rapidly mutating into a horse, Henry Golding, in her arms. Okay. As they, as they fly off. Yes, yes. And um, her, her plan is that she's seen that the, the things have, have hurt it. She wants to get close enough and she's thinking, um, maybe if I send enough... Um, Enough enough birds at it that it will it will hurt it with these angelic powers. Mm-hmm, we'll see mm-hmm. what goes on. Is is that fine? Do you have any other part to the plan? No, I think that's I think that's good. I'm just gonna use the angelic powers to fire birds yep. at the horse. Yeah. And just see what. Do you happens. control birds, or is it kind of like <laughs> a bird comes out? <laughs> Like you click your fingers, there's a wren, there's a pelican. Is it is it all rooks? <laughs> is it randomly any kind of bird? One's a puffin. It's, yeah, exactly. Albatross. One's a dodo, and yeah, then I'm exactly. like, wait, what? <laughs> this deserves more attention. Yeah, okay. But the movie can't be three hours long. No. 
I mean, it, it, it can, but we're, we're not going to have it. Let's we'll keep it at a brisk ninety minutes. It's just I, you know. yeah, we'll keep it to a nice early two thousands ninety minutes. All right, well, let's hear what the AI had for their getting it together section. Doctor Feather enlists the help of a local bird sanctuary and manages to obtain the feathers she needs. She performs the exorcism, but it doesn't go as planned. Doesn't say how it doesn't go as planned, but I guess that's the thing of getting it together. It's got to come up for the climax. We've had. Her, their, their attempt they're going to do an exorcism which we didn't even think about it's a demon horse oh yeah we didn't even think we're just like kill it yeah. <laughs> kill it with birds kill it with birds <laughs> fire so... birds phoenixes phoenixes oh yeah I love the idea of a phoenix alright well we're coming up to our climax so we will uh, see see how it happens finale yeah like a phoenix rook could descend right from the heavens yeah and like just so the rooks are being, we're firing rooks at the demon horse. Yeah. And then it's not working. No, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And we're like, wait, what? But then what's going to make the phoenix appear? Like, we need, I, we I, need a device. I've got, I've got a, a thingy. Div- I mean, maybe it is like that, that she's bringing up birds. Right? She's bringing up birds. And then she brings up a dodo, realises she can bring up extinct birds. So, yeah, and then the horse is, like, about... The demon horse is about to kill her. Yeah. And the... like, And then Davina Lloyd Hannah has to think, like, has to think on her feet. Like, the demon horse is so close to killing her, it's going to crap napalm on her. Right. <laughs> All right, well, I have, an, I have an idea for this. Yeah. So you've got Henry Golding. Yeah. He's now nearing the end of his transformation. Yes. But it means he can understand horse. He can understand all of the whinnies of the minions and oh, things yeah. like that. And I, maybe part of the thing is that the minions are bringing sort of like gasoline, oil and things like that because all of the flame and the flyer has to be powered from the internal organs mm. and that sort of stuff. And it's sort of like, you know, just sort of be careful. There's so much stuff. It's, it's going to destroy you. When it does this, this is a napalm splat that's going to go across the whole of... Uh, it's going to spread across the whole of London. It's going to like, take out Westminster and, and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, it's going to be like a nuclear bomb. Um, so what she does instead is that, thinking of the dodo, she realises she brings up a cockatrice... Uh, which is she keeps generating like useless birds, right? But they're suddenly <laughs> getting more and more mythical. Yes, and then she sort of finally has the idea. The demon horse is going. Oh, you thought that you could stop me? This will be it. And then she conjures one, and it's a phoenix. Yes, but she doesn't conjure it outside the horse. She conjures it inside the horse. Ooh, yeah. Where the huge reservoir of the napalm and the explosive stuff and all of that. Because maybe the horse is eating the birds that she fires at it. And it's gaining power because they're magical birds. It's it, becoming more magic. It's gaining power and then yeah. Davina Lloyd Hannah is like, wait a minute. Yeah. Just when she's like on the brink of it all falling apart. Yeah. She, on the brink of defeat, she generates a yeah. phoenix inside the horse. Yes. And it like explodes. And it explodes. There we are. That's our climax. Exploding Whoa. horse. And then all the minion horses become normal again. Yes. They become people, magically. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they were people who were in critical condition in the hospital. <laughs> so they need urgent medical attention <laughs> yeah, right. right away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's still not good, but... Uh, maybe because of all of the magic, it, it's reset. They're all in perfect health and now in their 20s. Oh, who knows? <laughs> Oh, my God. (laughs) It's just like they reset their biological clock. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's that's so good. I think this is way better than the AI, (laughs) seriously. Um, Well, so that's that's our climax, that the people are very scared, but at least they've regained their youth and are no longer dying. So hooray for them. Hooray for them. Yeah. I love it. And then, wait, can Davina Lloyd Hannah get with Henry Golding? We've still got our denouement, haven't we? So, oh, right. Uh, yeah. Let's just hear what the, the, the climax was for the AI. The evil entity possesses Dr. Feather, and she must fight for control of her own mind and body. She eventually triumphs over the entity and saves the horse and farmer's family. That was a farmer? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> he, he, he farmed giant horses. 
that's why Dr. Feather was called in originally. Ah, I see. Yeah. I can understand fighting in the mind and possession of their own body. I don't know it visually if it works on a cinematic scale. It's uh, certainly no giant horse crapping napalm in the centre of London. Ours, cause ours could be like a Marvel movie. I know. Do you know what I mean? The scale is just so big. I think, rather than just like this weird energy cloud or something like that, a giant horse crapping napalm, I would rather see than most of any of the villains that have been in Marvel so far. A hundred percent. You know, we should be on the... There we go. Get it to Amy Schumer's people or Polar's people or even Tina Fey. You know, let's get this greenlit. We need to do this. <laughs> we need, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> Um, right, so we're moving on to our final image. Final image. Let's first of all think about the after effects. She's still got the angel wings and the ability to conjure any bird shapes. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a winning god. She's. I mean, she's <laughs> there, she's still a hospital administrator. But it's like, <laughs> she can oh, conjure birds. Exactly. <laughs> she's like, how is this helping me? <laughs> <laughs> The wings, I guess I can fly, which counts down my commute, but getting in the lift is a nightmare. And like, none of my work clothes fit now. I know, I've got a special tailoring. tailored to fit the wings. Maybe, maybe she quits the job. <laughs> maybe after the phoenix, she conjures the goose that lays the golden egg, and uh, she's... Uh... <laughs> solution to every problem at work is conjuring yeah. a bird yeah You're exactly like, please it's please like, stop doing this really, it's catering it's, they run out of chickens it's so unsanitary it's like, all i can produce is dodos everyone has bird flu now exactly the whole of the southeast is overrun by dodos <laughs> because she's brought back like several of them because you can't produce anything else <laughs> they've just gone in this breeding thing but apparently they're delicious which is why they're extinct, because people kept eating them. Oh, oh my God. Because there was only a select amount of them. Whenever it was a dodo, it was like, kill them, yum, 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 yum. And then, pff, no more dodos. I didn't know that. That's so sad. That's, yeah. Dodo. If they hadn't have died out, do you reckon you could just sort of go into, like, a Tesco or something and, and buy a, 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 rather than a chicken and bacon sandwich, it would be like dodo and bacon? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what we're led by, isn't it? That's crazy. We'd have, like, instead of fried chicken, it'd be, like, fried dodo. Oh, I could go so go for a bucket of fried dodo right now. <laughs> do you want it after this? <laughs> Maybe that's it. It's like Kentucky Fried Dodo is, you know, we, we sort of see this in the aftermath. Maybe she keeps her powers. She can create birds. She's got the, the golden eggs. Uh, maybe uh, Henry is, uh, is, is all human now, but he retains all of the powers of a horse oh, yeah. in human form. What a perfect pairing. And the powers of a horse and a woman. I, who I don't can know what the powers of a birds. horse would be. <laughs> there's a powers reason a horse. there's a reason that we see Spider-Man, but we haven't seen Horseman. He's really good at kicking. Yeah, and there we go. He causing can... spine up spinal injuries. <laughs> he's, 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 he's very good at he's yeah. very good at um at counting with his feet. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, he's very good at having to be shot if he breaks his leg. <laughs> But he doesn't die. No. I mean, it was one of those sorts of things where it's sort of like uh, the horse has broken the leg. It's just too cruel for him to live. Yeah, no, that's I that's don't think insane. we're going to have that in our denouement. We have. No. Um, she, so it's here. She has defeated the person. She's able to give up her, her, her place. There's dodos all around the garden. There's the goose with the golden egg. There's um, Henry who lives with her, but he's got his own stable out the back. Yes. And she has like an av- aviary. Yes. That all the birds can live in. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's a really nice... And she's just relaxed, you know. She's, she's, yeah. She doesn't have to do anything. She can just relax and spend time, enjoy looking after the birds she creates. But now when she has predictions, like, the hospital listen to her. Yes. So maybe before they kind of weren't really maybe listening. That, and maybe that's the last thing, that we had the first thing, that they weren't listening to her predictions, and now there's kind of like a, a red red phone hotline that, yeah you know, she, she could just call the hospital and be like i predict this emergency or maybe so she, they can maybe get she ready. becomes like a superhero so it's like i predict an emergency but she feels she actually now has the power to take action she flies she off. can fly there she can conjure a dodo exactly she's got a phoenix <laughs> on one wing <laughs> conjure a dodo inside she's yeah, got like uh henry on the back of like a hippogriff uh you know flying alongside her yeah, they're a double act. Horse, horseman and bird girl. Horseman and bird girl. 
I like it. Yeah. Do you want to hear? Sequel. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nice we realise that this is the prequel movie to a cinematic universe of uh, the, the the horse girl, uh, the horseman, and, uh, and this is going to be the universe. next ten years of cinema. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hear what the final image was for the AI. Doctor Feather leaves the farm, exhausted but triumphant, with a newfound respect for the power of evil entities. I would respect an evil entity anyway. It hardly seems like character growth. My yeah. biggest flaw is that I don't believe in the power of evil entities. After fighting an evil entity, I believe in them now. Yeah, I don't think... I feel like AI kind of phoned it in yeah. this time. Yeah, it was so happy of getting all of the things out of the way, calling its main character Dr. Feather. It was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah now the movie whatever. has to end. Yeah, I think it's very... It's just basically the exorcist with feathers. I know. And a horse. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But I Come mean, on, AI, do better. But but not as exciting as Exorcist with feathers and a horse would actually be, rather than the pea soup coming out if she'd have you know been spitting out feathers. Yeah, I think. Was well, it the Witches of Eastwick where they do that thing where they 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 uh, they put feathers in the voodoo doll of um, who's it Jack Nicholson and he ends up like pff, vomiting out feathers everywhere. Oh God, I haven't seen that either. It's, Is it's that fun. a good film? It's fun. It's very weird, yeah, but it's like Cher and Michelle Pfeiffer and Susan Sarandon, who, who are like a coven of witches who all sort of like fall in love with uh, the devil as played by Jack Nicholson. Is it like believable that they're in love with Jack Nicholson or is he kind of too old? Um, and you're like, it's, oh, it's would they really be in love with believable him? because they all say how uh, how horrible he is and how disgusting he is, but they're they're charmed by him. He has supernatural charm. Oh, I'll check it. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, I mean, I think of if you like the idea of this this film that we've came up with, Witches of Eastwick might be in the the same kind of ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love this stuff. Anything supernatural. Right. So we've now got perhaps what is the most difficult bit. You have to come up with a title and a tagline for this movie. Ooh, okay. Right? So I'll tell you, first of all, what the AI had for their title and the tagline. Title, The Possession of Dr. Feather. Tagline, When the mind is not your own, what do you do? (laughs) What? I know. (laughs) I know. What do you do? I guess it's like the, the, <laughs> the autopsy of Jane Doe, the possession of Dr. Feather kind of I like the possession of Dr. Feather, that's yeah. good. But the tagline not, is... Not necessarily as, as good. <laughs> it's not great. Um, so we've got to come up with the title for the movie. Unfortunately, because the Marx Brothers have already named the movie this, we can't call it Horse Feathers. Horse Feathers... That would have been so Unless good. Unless you really want to call it Horse Feathers. I mean, we've had, like, films that have taken the things of other movie titles. You know, we could reimagine it for... No, let's think of our own thing. Okay. Hospital Horse. <laughs> That's, That's so d- basic as well. Demon on Hooves. Demon on Hooves. Demon on Hooves is good. Um, demon. Demon Horse. Winnie Geddon. Winnie Geddon is good. <laughs> I like Winnie Geddon. Uh, Napocalypse. Napop- ma- Napocalypse. I don't know because it doesn't really cut so the medical drama, does it? No, it doesn't. So it could be like what medical drama is called? Hospital in the ER. I mean, like. Oh, no, Hospital in the ER. Sorry, Horse in the ER. Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Bird versus the Demon Horse. No, it doesn't. That, that's that's Horses more. Horses versus birds. But then we don't want to reveal straight away. No, the birds. no, the, the whole the, the whole angel thing. The bird thing. Um, Hooved Demon. Hooved Demon. Oh, well, Ed, like e, like e, emergency department. And also Mr. Ed. What about like Horse Doctor? No. Because that uh, sounds more like vet, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, hooves of damnation. Hooves of damnation. I'm, yeah, no, I like that. Hooves of damnation is good. Okay. Yeah. Hooves of damnation. And then hooves we can damnation. in the tagline. <laughs> they say horses and hospitals don't mix. They don't know how wrecked they were. <laughs> so good <laughs> I really like that yeah there we go so there we have it we have Who's of Damnation versus the possession of Dr. Feather 
and that, and that's your movie. That's the episode of Humans vs. AI, the podcast. I hope you had fun doing it. I thought that was great. I did. I loved it. I'm just really impressed. Yeah, oh, we no, did it. I'd, I'd watch it. I, I would too. I would too. Um, so if you would like to watch uh, me and Hannah and other comedians like us every Saturday at the Comedy Cat above the Beer Cat in Ealing Broadway, please come along. And... Um, what would you like to promote? Have you got social media channels or things coming up? Oh, yeah. I'm on Instagram. Okay. Um, my Instagram handle is at Hannah Lloyd Davies. And that's about it. I'm very boring at the moment. No, no, that's fine. Well, I'll put that all in the, the show notes. And if you do stuff in the future, I'm sure you'll post about it on Instagram. I'll have it in your bio and things like that as well. Okay? I will do. Thank you. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.